this, we're not gonna this, miss any sheets. This this movie is gonna be destroyed under the mill of in-depth observation. First impression. It's still hilarious how much Terrence is not in this movie. Oh, Especially he is, he is the least in this movie than he's ever been. They highlight the fact that he is clearly a love interest, but they're not dating. The way that they talk about it is almost like, I believe Tinkerbell says it's complicated, which to me is like, ooh, that's messy breakup territory. No, 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 that's not what she says. Her sister asks if Terrence is her boyfriend, and she goes, <laughs> that's that's that to me screams messy breakup. It's just it's that's it's hilarious to me. It's like that to me is like some writer was like he was supposed to be her boyfriend and we never got there. <laughs> Especially it feels that way because this is the most heteronormative. Oh my god, it is very movie. Yet, which wouldn't be so bad, except I'm still baffled about why there are male and female fairies, since they don't have kids. Right, like, the concept of, like, kissing and sex should be alien to them. It is not required. I could see kissing, because that's still, like, you know, you just have a lot of weapons on your lips, so it became a way to interact with people. Mm -hmm. Sex seems like it's a thing, just from sort of the undertones of the language of this movie. That's wild. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I just don't get it. Also, why did they decide they needed upwards of two romances in this movie? It was like a fucking Shakespeare play, right? Like, I mean, a little bit, except uh, only the side characters get married off. Yeah, even, even, uh, even Dewey was getting in on the action. I was like, God, what is happening? We haven't done our intro, have we? That's all cold open. <laughs> That's all cold open. We're That's ready. That's all of it. That's all cold open. Welcome to direct video VHS? VHS? A podcast where we pair movies like Fine like Wine. Fine Wine. We are returning to a classic vintage. We're going back to the Disney fairies um cinematic universe the it's it's DFCU. kind of a, we <laughs> compare a lot of the movies we watch to boxed wine but this is maybe the most boxed wine like this is there's ex, they're extremely rogue movies but this, also i mean they'll get you drunk <laughs> they'll get you there right i think you know every time i think i think maybe people don't give uh the dfcu it's it's credit for for proving that this can be done that you can just have a bunch of movies that have nothing to do with each other and roughly share the same character sort of between them um 90 yeah, of, of which 90 percent of which exist just to show up so you can go oh hey oh hey it's that character it's that character oh hey kristen chenowitz sounds very southern in this movie for some reason for some reason she was like really laying it on my um yeah, my, my girlfriend, who, this is the first one of these that she has sat down to watch, ever. Um, I usually watched these while she was, like, doing something else. Um, and she was incredibly thrown off by how Southern this character was. She was like, I hate her. <laughs> that's, the thing is, I think that's new. I don't remember her being that Southern. I, I, I... I remember her being Southern, but there was a certain level of, like, laying it on thick that I was like, this feels a little insulting. Wait. Is she Rosetta? Because if so, it looks like maybe they... Maybe it's it looks else. like they got a new actress. Yeah! Maybe that's what happened. Oh my god, they totally did. They got a new yeah. actress. Yeah. They got somebody who can vaguely sound like, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. Rose to prominent for her roles, uh, Rose to prominence for her roles in Broadway musicals, including her performance in Glinda the Good Witch. Really? So they literally got, like, Kristen, the person who replaced Kristen Chenoweth in one thing, to replace her in this. This is Megan Hilty. It must be nice to have just a, uh, a known, like, apprentice to replace you. Whenever you're done, you can just be like, oh, you know, just get my apprentice. 
I I was convinced for the last half of this movie that Lord Mallory was voiced by Patrick Stewart, and he's not. And I'm really that's too bad. I can't even find him in this list. Oh, here it's because at the top it's Tim- yeah, Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton is still a big get. Yeah. Um, like he was one of the knockoff Bonds. Do you want to get into this instead of talking about the cast? I feel like I feel like I will get too. I want to talk about one last thing, right? Which is the director. We have two directors here, but from what I can tell, Peggy Holmes uh, did most of the work. Who and also was one of the screenwriters. Peggy Holmes, uh, I think, might be one of the first female directors to touch these movies. Yeah, they were kind of male led for a long time. Oof. And then, so, but she she oh, directed. Oh no. in... <laughs> Yes. Are you getting ahead of me? I don't know. I don't know if I found something that you weren't going to mention. Well, what I was going to mention is is that she she's going to direct and write the, the Pirate Fairy. Yes. And also is a previous is an alum. Uh, oh. Because she did uh, the Little Mer, she directed and wrote uh, the Little Mermaid Ariel's beginning. Okay, yes, but also you didn't also. see this. You did not see this. This is too much for me. I might have to tap out immediately. She is listed as choreographer for Kronk's New Groove. Oh my god! Choreographer means that I can blame her for the one scene I remember from Kronk's new crew. Oh, it has to be, right? <laughs> the one scene where there's dancing. Uh, apparently she was a choreographer in a lot of movies. She was an Encino man. Wild. She was heavily involved in, in a couple of these movies. Helped do dialogue and story for these three that she was involved in. So I'm excited for, for the pirate fairy now. <sighs> Are you? Okay. It, the, the, the cover art for that one looks so bananas to me. All right, let's go. I'm ready. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I loaded this movie up on Disney Plus was that it's only 79 minutes long. And yeah, it feels like, because of the sort of episodic structure of it, it feels long. It like takes a while to really get going. Oh, yeah. Like, it takes a while for these two fairies who it's supposedly about to even meet. The, you want know, the first thing I noticed? Mm-hmm. It's called Secret of the Wings. Yes. And it's it certainly not, is. It is not called Tinkerbell and the Secret of the Wings. No, it is not. Although, that is, if you look it up on Wikipedia, listed as an alternative title. But that's so weird. Well, I guess at this point, they were confident enough that they could drop Tinkerbell right from the, like, you're gonna, you know. You know that this is a fairy's property. It just seems like, th- like thematically, like you you want to keep that branding, unless they were trying to see if they could drop her from the title so that they could make fairy stuff without Tinkerbell in it, which I assume they eventually do or did, because the fairies was a short lived but kind of deep vein that they had going for a while. I mean, it looks like oh, we missed this one, but that's because it was a thirty minute television special. But it does look like they were they were trying to really like lean into this is like Disney fairies, right? Um, but Except then just then for the last one they bring Tinker Bell's name back into it. So yeah, so it starts off the way that you want every fairy movie to start off with a vaguely Celtic sounding song that is not very good and that is extremely forgettable while Tinker Bell goes and does something. Fairies are preparing for the winter, I think. I, this song didn't sound too bad. It wasn't great. I mean, great. they never sound too bad. <laughs> They're just, like, pretty forgettable. I actually think that the song that they play later is distinctly worse because yes. it's the thing that you specifically hate, hate. so much. Which, which is, is be too specific and basically just describe exactly what's happening. Yeah, it's it's a little, it's a little too on the nose. We, we are introduced to the concept of winter fairies. Yes. Which, so now, so, okay, wait. So fairies are split into a variety of roles, right? Because you have the, the fast ones, the flower ones, the light ones, the animal ones. Tinkers. The, the tinkers. And I'm, I feel like I'm missing one. Uh, water? Did you do Water. I, I, oh yeah, the water ones. And garden, I think you said flower. Yeah. Are, 
Yeah, animal. Okay, okay. Animal, art, light, garden. Uh, the speed ones. And there's Terrence. The water ones. I guess, who just does um, the fairy dust. There's a lot of roles. I feel like the more time we spend in Neverland, the more roles fairies get. But the thing is, is like, they're not, they're not subdivided into like, these, all these fairies that I've just mentioned all do, all do the same job in spring, summer, and fall. But it seems like we're introduced to the idea that there are other fairies who have to do those jobs for winter. But they're, but but all but winter fairies are just winter fairies, right? And all of them have like frost powers, I guess. Maybe chief among the frost powers is the ability to not fucking die because it's cold. Yeah, well, and also to fucking die because it's hot. That's true. Or I guess not cold is more apt because it's pretty cold in the fall, right? Even in the like, they can't even hang out in the fall. Anymore. Right, so so there are ambassadors, right, for the summer, fall, and spring. I believe the summer and and is the Queen Fairy the summer fairy, or is that or am I just projecting? Is the Queen Fairy separate? No, the Queen Fairy is separate. I think the um I think in one of the episodes we called them like MCs, the master yes. ceremony for each uh season. For for each season, they're like they're usually depicted as these like tall male fairies. Legless. Right? Yes, yes, legless like the queen. But I think this is our first uh we eventually are our first introduction to Lord M- M- Malori, uh yes. who has more of a strider from Lord of the Rings vibe. Oh, absolutely. They were they, they knew we need to we need to create a this is a male fairy that fucks. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is made, I mean, not that explicit, but explicit. (laughs) It's like, oh, he could get it. Yeah, so winter's coming. There are winter fairies, apparently. Tinkerbell is excited about going to see the winter side of the island because it's Tinkerbell and she always wants to fucking go places. Further complicating the timeline because then it means it can't have been a year since she's been born because apparently she hasn't been brought up to speed about this shit. (laughs) What are you talking about, Tinkerbell? We don't go over to the winter side. (laughs) I cannot contemplate the timeline of these. The last, the last... I Three movies refuse. that we've seen all I take place refuse. in under a year, at that least. It's impossible. <laughs> at least three months, at most eight. I cannot. This is this is obscene. I will not have this conversation. I mean, actually, now when we think about it, right? Because we have the lost treasure is the spring, right? The no, uh, is that the and first the great one? F- the second one. I think the first one has to take place in spring because the fairies are going over to change the season. That's when we first see winter fairies coming back. Although I I didn't know at the time that that meant that they were, that they had their own part of the island. To go to. To go to, yes. But the winter fairies have to come back and the spring fairies have to go out because she has to deliver that music box. Yeah. Oh, okay. So in the second movie, autumn is happening. But that's not possible. Or it is more than a year. And we have to just accept the fact that Tinkerbell doesn't pay attention to things. Yeah, the the last movie we just saw, it was summer. It was summer. I suppose it's possible that they could have happened out of order. No, because things happen in in oh, The Lost right. Treasure that you are referenced. What? You know what? Yeah, the, the her bug friend who was the standout character of The Lost Treasure and then does not get any more lines at to, all. No, nothing uh, to do. M- rendered mute. By her wish, which I just remembered. But uh, also Ter- Terrence is like hanging around in Great Furry Rescue as well. Kind of. Uh, more so than this movie. I don't even think he speaks in this movie. I don't think he does. We're just reminded that he exists so that maybe they can bring him back later if they want. Maybe the last time Winter happened, they were just like, Oh, we're not even going to let Tinkerbell get involved. Here, Tinkerbell. Why don't you lock yourself in your room? No reason. So winter's happening. Uh, Fawn is taking all the animals over to the winter 
part of the... To the bridge. All right, and I, I mean, it's unclear why exactly, but whatever, she's doing it. And in maybe the best piece of animation in this movie, when the animals cross the bridge, they change to their winter colors. Yeah, that does look pretty cool. It's pretty cool, it's pretty smooth. Um, and I don't usually care for the animation in these movies. They kind of flex a little bit, too. They have one, yeah. of, they have one of the bunnies, like only do parts of the body, and I was like, damn. Right. And when, like, the weasels jump over, it's like, oh, all right, all right. Yeah, no, that was good. It's good looking. Um, and then Tinkerbell obviously uses this as a chance to go over to the other side and see what's happening over there. And her wings get all sparkly. And, uh, Fawn yanks her back and takes her to the hospital to get great hospital jokes. We got a couple of good hospital jokes. It was around this time I noticed that they seem to have like a new engine or a new workflow for doing this. Because some of the backgrounds look hand drawn or at the very least like pre-rendered and then like kind of modified because they they look really, really good. Like sometimes like there's a couple of scenes where like at it for no reason, like just to set like just to set the, the scene, they'll like cut to the forest, the autumn forest, mm-hmm. right? Or they'll cut to, like, the mountains in the winter area. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, that's definitely, like, has hand-drawn elements in it. Because because there's it's completely static when they pan over it. There's no, like, parallaxing. Uh, and I'm just wondering, like, why why they made that change. If it was, like a, like, a cost issue or if it was just, like, an artistic choice for this movie. But it looks good. That's a good question. I suspect it was cost. I suspect that they decided they wanted a bunch of backgrounds for these movies that they could keep coming. Maybe. I mean, I haven't seen them reuse anything because we keep going to different settings. Right. But if they finally want to just sit in Pixie Hollow for a while, they can reuse these now. Yes. But also maybe not because the next one is, I presume, on a boat. So everybody was worried about Tinkerbell's frozen wings. But she's like, no, but they were smarkly. And isn't this important? And everybody's like, nope. So she goes and finds a book. It's been eaten up by bookworms, which was one of those jokes that felt like a classic Disney uh, fairy joke. Yeah, but just kind of like belabored oh. a little much. Oh, love, gotta love them, gotta love oh. these writers. Um, and so she finds out that the the keeper who writes all fairy books, because this is how fairies work. Everybody has one job that they do. Mm-hmm. Who writes all fairies books is a winter fairy. And she needs to go find him because of the destroyed book. So find out about her sparkling wings. So she uh, she does a costume change. Thank Classic. God. Classic. It's been a little while since we've had a costume change. Once once more, her tinker abilities are kind of relegated to a montage, though. Like, And it's too bad because, again, my favorite parts of these movies are when she is building something. It makes... I don't know if it's because they film it well or if it's because this is like the one thing that she does that is almost always entirely positive. But I don't know. I just enjoy those scenes and they never spend a long time. They're always like, okay, now time for the next. Thing. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess, I don't know. It. You would think that the one thing you would want to lean into with these movies is like, hey, you know what's cool is like building shit. They sure don't, though. But, it, yeah, it feels like, especially, like, especially after the first movie, it's like, nah. You know what's cool? Finding a man. I guess! But but also, it's not cool. In fact, it's against the law. <laughs> uh, one of my problems with this movie, and this movie, um, this series has had ongoing problems with its idea of, for instance what the ideal feminine form looks like in that all the fairies kind of look the same. One of my problems with this movie is that the characters, the male characters who are clearly love interests are so hot. They are. Oh, it's absurd. They are so hot. (laughs) Like there's a guy who is, I think his name is Sled. Sled. He's just, you just see him for a second. I'm like, oh man, she's going to fall in love with this dude. And this it's guy, not, it's, it's not, not what, what happens, happens, but somebody falls in love with him. And you're like, you're absolutely aware. He looks like fucking Thor. <laughs> like, he, this guy, this guy looks like 
and like pick a Marvel Chris, right? Like right. he looks like that. <laughs> he's got the hair. He's got like the the fu- like the fucking Dorito torso. Like yeah. And and he even like every time he's introduced like taking care of like an owl. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like, like everything oh, about this guy. Side. Like uh, he's dreamy. He's kind of dumb. And what bothered me about that is that we do have these male characters who have been there since the beginning and have since never really had any like really like romantically coded interaction with anyone except arguably with each other until this movie at the very end kind of yeah uh but but even that it's like it's very like tossed aside compared to the other dudes who are just like i don't know it feels it feels like so much more time is spent on being like yeah but that guy's hot it's wild she wants to go speaking of uh what the hell are their names speaking of I'm out. I'm never gonna find him. Clank and Bobble. Got him. Yes, Clank and Bobble. It's me with Clank and Bobble. Uh, they get a little more screen time in this movie because oh yeah, because a lot of the early parts of this movie is Tinkerbell actually doing her job and then <laughs> trying to get away from actually doing her job again. Classic Tinkerbell move. But these two though, ride or die to the end. Absolutely, you know. I feel like they might be her best friends. I realize she has all these other friends. Well, she actually hangs out with these guys, though. Right. When they realize that she is going to use these baskets that they need to deliver to the Winter Fairies via Snowy Owl, a bunch of, like, big headwigs flying in, they, mm-hmm. uh, they're like, oh, okay, if you're sure. The, unfortunately, she gets the shitty owl. Yes. Which I actually quite like because it was introduced earlier as like, this owl's going to be bad at this. This owl's bad at his job a little bit. He must be new. Yeah. And the owl picks her up and she's like, oh shit, it's all going wrong. A good action scene. And then she topples out. And now she's on uh, the frost side and we see the two hot guys. Two hot guys. Oh yes, we see Lord Malory and Sled. And (laughs) Lord Malory... Is it, it, uh, right? His I I do love that his name is fucking Sled. It's amazing. It's such a bro name. We don't um, even we learn see... it till like the very end. And Lord Malory is also kind of like way too hot compared to all the other male fairies that we've been introduced to. Mm-hmm. Especially it's... because usually when they are like higher ups like that, they just look more and more like a uh, goofy. Like, not, uh, yeah, like... Sorry, not like Goofy. goofy but... <laughs> yes, they look more and more like like Goofy. Max's dad. <laughs> they, they... Lord Malory, why don't you look like us? What makes you different? You know what? I take it back. That's exactly what it's like. Um, yeah. But like I said before, he looks like Aragorn. Yeah, he, he really... And he acts like Aragorn, too. He rides in on this fucking owl because he's too mm-hmm. cool for school. And it took me, I'm gonna make a confession, a little longer than it should have to realize why that would have been. Yeah, I I didn't, until the movie literally spelled it out for me, I was like, oh. I thought he was just being, like. I thought he was just cool. <laughs> I thought he was just being cool. I thought he was just doing this to look cool. I, I just had an owl friend. Is that crazy? I, just, I thought he just liked writing owls. Like, yeah. Like, I could fly, but why would I when I can ride an owl? And so Tinkerbell follows Sled, who is going to go see the Keeper, because her book fell, and he's going to go give it back to the Keeper. She follows Sled, still a hilarious name, and finds the Keeper, who is... What accent would you German? say? Interesting. I thought it was Norwegian somewhere, and uh, Cheney thought it sounded like Minnesota. <laughs> it says here on the Wikipedia that he speaks with a Western accent. Interesting. Which is a falsity, which is <laughs> not true. I would like you to cite your sources, Wikipedia. West of where? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> West of the Matterhorn? Like, what the fuck? Western. 
I I was desperately trying to figure out who this voice reminded me of. So I looked up the voice actor, and first of all, Je- it's Jeff Bennett, who is like one of those like prolific voice actors who's everybody's voice in everything. Mm-hmm. Like he's the voice of Clank. Specifically, what this voice reminded me of was Dexter's dad, who he also voices, <laughs> but with a little bit of Petri sprinkled in, who he also voices. But yeah, this voice drew me up the fucking wall every time he spoke. It just sounds so off kilter. I wonder what the voice direction was on this, because this guy's a professional, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's, it just sounds very odd. Um, anyway, this is when we get the big reveal. It turns out that her wings are weird, because she has a twin sister. Now, a they don't twin? use the word twin, despite the fact that it would be the best word for this. In fact, it would be the correct word. They just say right? sisters, which... It bothers me that they have that word and not twin, if this is so rare. <laughs> anyway, her her sister became a frost fairy because her... Okay. You know what? No. I'm going to take a step back. And we, need to we, have to, this. we have to go through this step by step, right? Because it shows us... A fairy is born the when? first time that a baby laughs. We know this because we watched Tinkerbell be, be born. born. In an insane move. In an insane move. It, and the strangest possible choice they could have made. We watched Tinkerbell be born in the first movie by a fairy laughing, and then she is sort of a, um, like a dandelion. A dandelion, a dandelion uh, fluff, yeah. Floating along to Fairy Hollow, and when she lands, she is a fairy in like a dandelion fluff dress. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, a new fairy, and she got her tinker job. We all remember that. We've all seen the movies. Turns out that actually, when that happened, there was a second dandelion fluff. Well, no, before that. (laughs) Okay. Before that, the baby's laugh. Well, yes, the baby's laugh caused the two dandelion fluffs, I guess. It splits, it splits into two, I don't even know what to call them, like, energies? Which then, like, get their own dandelion fluffs, but uh-oh, one of them is Do you impeded. know what would have- Hey, hey, as we as we talk about this, do you know what would have made more sense? If the baby had been a twin? If the baby- So, this is what I was thinking, right? If, 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 if there are baby- If two babies are born, and they are mm-hmm. twins, and both of those babies laugh- Probably are it would those... need to be- Probably be, it would need to be identical twins, right? Yeah, wouldn't you have- Two identical wouldn't you have, wouldn't they be sisters? Wouldn't they yes, be fucking sisters? Twins. At the yes. least. Yes. I would like that better. That's not what they did. So what I love about this, though, is it casually, so, so subtly implies that Vidya's terrible at her job. <laughs> because she was the one, she's, part of her job is flying the new fairies back to, back to Neverland. On but the she wind. lost one. And that one got caught in a tree and gets in late and on, like, the other side of the hollow, I guess, so that she ends up being a frost fairy. Mm -hmm. And this is so exciting for them, you know, because they found sisters. Now, for some reason, and I don't know if it was their fault or my fault, but I could not bring myself to really care. I don't know if this was the movie failing to convey this emotion well enough Uh or me not buying into it. But, yeah. like, I just felt like the whole time these stakes are so low. The, no, no, I, I agree. Nothing okay. nothing in this movie that happens really has any level of, like, urgency until the very end. But until by the then, very end, where for some reason it ramps up to 100. It ramps up to 100, but you're disconnected, and you're like, well, obviously everything's gonna be okay. Right. You know... We've, we've been walking at a pretty brisk pace, and honestly, I'm not going to join you on this sprint for the finish line. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, emotionally, you're just not there. Right, because it um, didn't build it up earlier. Anyway, they're excited because they found each other. They spend all day together. Tinkerbell gets to meet all the other frost fairies. This is bananas to me, because now we've introduced ourselves to, like, an even bigger cast of characters who I assume are never going to do anything again. That is precisely what I said. I said they have such a huge cast of characters, and they keep adding more. I need a fairy war, right? 
at this point, we have enough characters that we know to have a fairy war. And we can have some of the minor ones die, so you'll still feel something. So you'll, you'll, uh, you'll feel it. Uh, but we meet Spike and Bliss, who I actually, you know, I quite like them. And yeah. like their, their, uh, their energy was kind of close to Bobble and Clank's. Yes. Uh, and like, she goes ice skating and enjoys the winter, basically. She's having a great time until, well, sorry, they're comparing things that they have in common. Right. Which I almost feel like could be, like, I feel like that could have been done better. Again, this is uh, almost always my problem with these movies, is that they they usually stumble upon a good idea and don't execute it well. For instance, I'm actually fascinated with what twins have in common. Yeah. I think that's amazing. Like, you, you'll... Like, twins separated at birth turn out to have the same favorite food. Or, like, there was a famous one where two twins who did not know each other independently met and married two other twins. Yes. Like, stuff like that. That's fascinating. They they don't do it amazingly well. Uh, But they start talking about, like, what Periwinkle doesn't know from Tinkerbell's world. But they, they, they are, like, comparing interests. Sorry, her name's Periwinkle. <laughs> oh, yeah, her name, her sister's name is Periwinkle. I assume it's a joke somehow, but I wouldn't be able to tell you how. Because it's just a flower name, right? Like Right, yeah, I mean, it comes back because they give her the Periwinkle. In, in, and, and actually, one of my favorite delivered lines is um, when, the, when Rosetta gives her the Periwinkle and she says, it's a periwinkle. Also. <laughs> it's just like so quietly she says also. <laughs> to tell you that, yeah, that's why I thought to give it to you. Because it has your name. Because your name. Because you're also a, a you. A peri- it's you. Look at <laughs> you. Look at that. What? Uh, uh, here's, here's something that's bananas, right? Uh-huh. Is why would you name somebody after a flower that they could never see? I just googled Periwinkle to see if it has anything to do with winter or anything, and I can't mm. find nothing. Nothing. No. It's weird. Do you think it maybe they just wanted a, her to be named after a flower that sounded that had like anchor in it? Yeah, I wonder. But I don't know. It's just it's a bit of a stretch. And it's well, it can be kind of like cool colored, like blue. I wonder if that's also why. I do want to stress that her name is Tinkerbell. But her name is Belle. Sorry, her name is Belle. Her name is Belle and she's a tinker, so she's and called she... Tinkerbell. Which is a little weird because nobody else has a no name one... like that. Come yeah, to say it out loud. Nobody calls him Tinker Bob or Tinker Clank. Well, because that's terrible. <laughs> it's just, they could have not done this, right? You know what? That was entirely possible for them to not do. Yeah, and they didn't give her a name that was, they didn't give Periwinkle a name that was like something... Frost something. What if it's one of those things where, like, after the Great Fairy Extinction? Oh my gosh! Which has to, which again has to happen, uh-huh. because there are no other fairies in Neverland at some point. She like takes up the moniker Tinker Bell as her name to kind of like hold on to her past. Like this was this is a job I used to have in a society that no longer exists. Kind of like how. Uh, in Russia, after the fall of the USSR, there were a lot of, like, these older politicians who people called, like, comrade whatever. Like, oh, this is a person who's, like, an old communist. Counterpoint. I okay. feel like the more lore we get on Neverland, the less likely it is that Peter Pan is canon in this world. Like, the canon doesn't make sense if part of Neverland is always frozen. Mm-hmm. This just, this never happened before, so... Well, maybe we just never went to the frozen part of the island. Then again, maybe it has something to do with the Great Fairy Extinction, as yeah. you say. Right? Like, nature had to take care of itself, and that's why the seasons are all fucked up and they're no longer on time. Oh, no. Wow, that is... We thought it was global warming, but that's what they want you to think. We cannot go back to the, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> uh... Okay, what was happening? Yeah, uh, they were talking about their interests, I suppose. And uh, Tinkerbell had lit a fire, and it made a big crack, and so she realizes she has to leave 
partially because um, the Watcher, the writer, what's his name? The Tink, the the Seeker, the Seeker, the, the Seeker, the Seeker. No, that yes. The hmm. the hmm. Dewey. You know, ha- Dewey. I'll call yes. him Dewey. Dewey's Dewey. his real name. Dewey is what his friends call him. Dewey's what his friends call. Him. So Dewey is what my friends call me. Partially because the Keeper is what he's called. Keeper. Dewey shows up and he's like, you have to get out of here. It's too dangerous for you. There is a reason this law is in place. You should go. And she's like, oh, okay, I'll go. And she says to Perry Winkle, shh, dive it. Dive it, sweat. Do you even, I'm not you actually I'm, gonna go. You think I'm actually gonna listen to this fucking nerd? Come on. <laughs> Is... This guy, this guy has a walking cane, even though he flies everywhere. What do you mean? <laughs> this walking cane so long. It's it's lo- it has to be long enough to touch the ground while he's flying everywhere. Yeah, it's kind of great. Uh, it, it 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 is amazing, and I do like it. But it's it's one of those, sometimes. It's one of those... <sighs> so, I'm really torn on the character design of these movies because sometimes when, it's great when they do a variant on their boring ass character design. It's amazing. But so often they just don't. And they're just like, yeah, all fairies look the same. Yeah, so they run on a fucking lynx out of there. And she and Perry decide to meet up the next day. The next day? Does it really take her one day to do this? Jeez. Right. Yeah. Yep. So Tinkerbell goes to Bobble and Clank and is like, Clank. all right, I need to build a moving air conditioner. Air- Tinkerbell is, is like, Two centimeters away from inventing shaved ice. Yeah, you just you like, just have to catch it. If she if she had caught it in a cup and like I don't know sprinkled some vanilla into it, like squeezed a vanilla bean onto it, she would have been like, "I've invented, I've, I'm we are this close to inventing ice cream, yeah. and fairy society's ruined." Right? This is how the extinction happens. <laughs> it's just, that's it. They like ice cream too much. Is the problem. Mm-hmm. So they build this, and again, these these, these are the bits I like. Uh, she and Clank and Bobble, Bobble. and then eventually, you know, her five other friends, build this big bike, basically, that is also, that also will shave ice and blow it into the air so it can constantly be snowing on Perry. Now, I don't want to get into basic thermodynamics here, but I can just say really quickly that this is not how that would work. What's your problem? No, 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 show your work. No, okay, fine. You know what, fine. Here's the problem, right, is when you, sh- if you, if you shave ice and blow it into the air like that, the, the cold dissipates into the air more quickly. That doesn't make it colder faster, it just means that the temperature will equalize back to normal faster, right? But the, the way you feel cold is by having heat sucked out, right? So a better way to do this is to take your big chunk of cube, right, and put a fan in front of the damn thing and blow air that sucks the cold air that's coming off of the ice and blows it directly onto the person, right? Like, And that would probably make the ice last longer. It would make the ice last longer because when you shave ice, it melts faster. It's a surface area thing. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, you know what? That's actually completely fair. I was ready to be like, yeah, but magic. But you know what? This is... This is a fair argument. No, because and here's the here's the thing is if magic could solve this problem, then this frost fairy could just frost herself. It is not completely clear at the end of the movie whether or not she could have just frosted herself. I think she could have. Or if they can just only hang out in the ice part. I don't know. It's unclear. So with everybody's help, they get all they they get the ice for it and they shave it and snow it on her. Everybody's real big on showing periwinkle around. They, they, the friends, uh, Tinkerbell's friends introduce themselves in the wildest way, because instead of walking up to her and being like, hello, my name is Fawn. I talk right. to animals. Hello, sure. my name is, uh, Vidya. Vidya, I moved. Oh, Vidya. A... Is Vidya there? Vidya is there, but frankly, she doesn't do anything in this movie. She's just sort of hanging out. She doesn't, but also she doesn't, she doesn't participate in, in this a uh, weird introduction because she kind of just shows up and is like also on Vidya and I, I don't like Tinkerbell uh, but you seem alright. Vidya and Tinkerbell, look I know that Tinkerbell has a love interest. And it's Vidya. Well, more and more these two are going like rivals to lovers. 
they it it, it is it is the the moment Vidya wraps her arm around Tinkerbell's sister and says she's a lot to deal with. That's some that's some <laughs> friends with benefits energy that I'm okay with. Well, except that this except this movie would never acknowledge that that's the energy they're putting out. Oh no! Are you kidding me? In the year of our Lord, when did this movie come out? Twenty twelve. Twenty twelve, which was surprising to me because do you know what that is? That's the that Avengers. Sure, but also a year before Frozen. Oh, fuck, I was convinced yeah. convinced watching this movie that it must be like a year after Frozen. No, no, yeah, for, you're right. Frozen is 2013. Yeah, wild. So what you're saying uh, is is that Frozen is even more creatively bankrupt than I thought. I We cannot have this conversation. <laughs> oh, well, something I want to go back to a little bit is when Tinkerbell is building this machine and planning with her friends all of this stuff, right? First of all, she gets caught by like a net machine that Bobble and Clank were working on. Yep, to catch trolls. To catch women? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> but she says, I forget who she says this to. I, and I don't quite remember where this happens, but she's she's talking to somebody about, like, how how she, about about the law, right? Like, this is a law and I hate it. Um, and how, and she says the line, she's my sister and I'm never going to lose her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And the energy in that line and the way that it's framed really sounds, like, sinister. (laughs) And, (laughs) right, like, and also, and also I'm never going to lose her now that me, Clank, and Bubble have built this fairy-sized jar. Um, Right? And and this is the point in the movie where I was like... We have devised a way to freeze one of us in amber. (laughs) In amber, like Han Solo, she is going to live in my house. And it was at this point... When I was convinced, I was entirely convinced that I had figured out, I had figured out the secret of the wings. I knew what the secret was, and it was that they were going to, like, merge into one fairy. Jesus, Andy! That, that something was going to happen, and the solution, the solution was that they were going to, like, Comb- they were like in the the same way that the babies laugh separated. They were going to recombine. <laughs> no, okay, wait. In your mind, Ch- Chimney Christmas was this like a Dragon Ball Z thing where they would mm-hmm. separate later, or was this no. a now they are the full person that they were always supposed to be. Yes, yes. In my mind, this is a, you were never, this is a freak of nature. This was never supposed to happen. And now it has been, it has been tragically corrected. And now, and now you will never lose your sister uh, because she will always be with you because you are the, you are one person. What in the plotting of this movie made you think that that was the turn it would take? Be- well, because there, there, this whole like, like, oh, n- she's not allowed to know what the w- like. All- the movie's called Secret of the Wings, and I didn't know at the time that it had nothing to do with the plot of this movie. Um, I mean, the but- Secret of the Wings is. It seems to be just that since her wings glowed, it means she has a twin. Yes, but also like nobody else in none of the other fairies seem to know this. They're all they're all baffled at the idea of of sisterhoodness, um, uh-huh. right? Like, and also the like the babies laugh separating and one of them getting lost. All of it to me was like foreshadowing. Like, oh, they are one person. Tinkerbell is incomplete, and and something is and and also like their wings, like when they touch caused like a blast of energy to happen and i'm like oh that's that's them almost combining but but dewey is smart and he knows like no you shouldn't ever do that again because if you do like one of you will cease to exist and we're gonna come back to this theory this i sound like a crazy person we're gonna, uh, come, back you? To, we're gonna come back to this because there's a point later where i was i was like i was convinced i was so close i was like oh i figured it out word. i've connected the dots um Oh so God. they they take her on a tour. Tinkerbell's friends all introduce themselves in a bananas way, where they're all like showing off their powers, and then and then afterwards they're like, "Hello, these are our names." Yes, the one thing Periwinkle really wants to see is butterflies, and so she gets to see butterflies. There's a bunch of butterflies. I don't think there's anything else really to say at this point. The ice runs out because for some reason they didn't plan for the amount of ice they were going to. 
is seems strange. Yeah, you would think that maybe they would. I mean, I guess, I guess, in my opinion, they shouldn't have gone to the other side of the fucking island. They should have just stayed close. Yeah, they could have tested this slowly too. Mm-hmm. Could have been like, how long do we get out of a block of ice? How big of a block of ice do we need? And they don't. There's no beta testing uh, at all. It's like sending a spaceship off, a rocket ship off the first time you have enough fuel instead of figuring out how to make it not explode. It's a, it's a real Kerbal Space Program way to do it. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I just want to tip my hat a little to Bobble, who this whole time has been pedaling on the thing to make enough ice to go. So Periwinkle cannot die. And he's doing his damnedest, and it's over. They gotta, like, rush her back to the cold side. They're, like, freaking out. Her wings are, like... They sort of look like warped glass. They're, they're like, bendy and weird. The effect of of how these wings look, I think, is pretty cool because it does kind of look like... Like, if you've ever seen glass blown when it's Mm -hmm. done wrong and they kind of just, like, fuck it up. It has that, like, shimmery rainbow effect. Yeah. They almost look like they are melting off of her. It's, uh... Yes. It, it, is, it is an interesting choice that they have made. This was maybe my least favorite part of the movie. When they get her back across, and she is almost immediately fine. Uh, it really annoyed me, and it's something that this movie does a few times before this, and will at least one more time after this, introduce a problem completely fix the problem and then move on to the next problem yeah what are consequences right when like if they had spent some time like tinkerbell being worried that the periwinkle wasn't going to get better then you could have some like emotional stakes but we're just moved on to the next thing which is um lord malori and uh Queen Clarion both showing up and being like, this is why you can't do this. No, no, wait. Before that happens, okay. Uh, Lord Malory, in his anger at uh, Tinkerbell, uh, at, at, sorry, not at Tinkerbell, but at uh, Perry Wolf getting injured, like, throws with his owl the machine, the ice shaving machine into the river. Well, okay, that was after, I, I was talking about how their first interaction, but yes. He's like, I suppose he's trying to prevent this from ever happening again. He uses Zowl to toss a thing into the river. I thought it was weird they left it. They spent so long on this and they're just leaving it on the bridge. He knocks it into the river and immediately it gets caught and starts shaving ice and spewing it into the air. And you know if you have ever turned your air conditioner out the window that this will cause a significant and very fast atmospheric change. <laughs> yeah, you we th- this is my favorite part of the day after tomorrow is when you see everybody turn their air conditioners inside out and it causes the day after tomorrow. <laughs> and Jake Gyllenhaal's running around like, "Please stop. Everybody stop turning your air conditioners outside." Ah, oh, it's great. There's no reason for this to be the thing that kicks everything off. But why not? Right. They could have come up with a magical reason, but they went ahead and they came up with a technology reason. Yeah, once again, science is evil. But the technology they come up with doesn't make sense for what it's doing. It's not even, like, magical technology. Like, it's not like Doc got going crazy because of his arms, you know? It's bananas. And then, and then also the queen, 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 what's her Claria. name? Claria. Queen Clarion shows up and is like, uh, this is not Lord Malory's ruling. It's mine. Gasp. <gasps> and then then they kind of go their separate ways and Lord Malory is telling Periwinkle at the same time Queen Clarion is telling Tinkerbell this story, right? A story of some random fairies that who even knows who they might be? Probably Who could they important. possibly be? I can't imagine. <laughs> They're like, once upon a time there were these two fairies and they wanted to get down. But as it turns out, uh, that's a bad idea. One of their wings broke and there's no coming back from that. Once your wings are broke, they're broke. So uh, then they made the law. They, They say the line, there is no known way to fix wings. Keep that in mind, folks. There, No one knows of a way. As, as this is going on, it becomes 
extremely clear that uh, Lord Malori is the is the one with the broken wing because he wears this um, like feather cloak and rides an owl, as we've said, and that Queen Clarion is the one who was macking on him. Do you know what bothers me about this? Can I say the thing that bothers me about this? Yeah. Obviously that's terrible. And maybe that law should be put into place to keep people safe. You know, the same reason why there are um, statutes about quarantine and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Personally, though, on a personal level, the worst thing that could have happened as a consequence of this already happened, and therefore Lord Merlory can go wherever the fuck he wants. Yeah, right? He has nothing to fear. He's already fucked. He's got a broken wing. It doesn't matter if the other wing breaks. Wings don't appear to actually be, like, connected to fairies at all. He's not going to lose any blood. They are purely magical. I mean, apparently it is painful. Oh, I'm sure it's painful. And maybe there is a way to deal with that. Maybe there isn't. But I think he should be way more willing to risk it because it, it's not going to be an ongoing problem. Like, he's not going to get any worse. Even if he lost his other wing, even if he lost both of his wings fully instead of just one of them being broken, he is never going to fly again. No. Go kiss your girlfriend. Go kiss your girlfriend. Well, and that's the thing that's bananas to me, right? Is like, is like the, the, in my head, right? The story in my head, right? This guy, you know, loses his wings trying to be with his girl, Mm -hmm. right? Bold, strong, brave, good for him. Mm -hmm. She passes a law that's like, it is illegal for winter fairies to cross into the, into the other season lands because they'll, because she knows they'll get injured. And vice versa. And vice versa. And now, at this point, he could be like, well, I've already, like, I'm already fucked. I can just pretend to be, like, another type of fairy, right? Like, it's not like, it's like whatever, right? Or he could, or she could pass, like, there could be an amendment that's like, obviously, lords need to meet sometimes. If you're in charge, you can come on over or something. You know, like, this is, yeah. Go on. In- yeah, but in- instead, he has to go back, and he has to be in charge of things. And my- in my mind, it's like, oh, one, she she doesn't want to face the fact that she caused this guy to essentially break a limb. Mm. Right? Because it means that he went over to her place, and she never went over to his. <laughs> So she's kind of, fe- so she felt guilty and was like, well, I don't want to look at you <laughs> and be reminded yes. of this. And he was like, you know what? That's fine. That's okay. That's fair. I'll just go, ba- I'll go back to my place. It's fine. And it's a little tragic. That is a little tragic. Although I do need to point out for the listener that this movie contains none of that emotional resonance. No, absolutely not. None. The story is told so that it can be a surprise. Later. Uh, a surprise in deep quotations. Oh, the movie thinks it's so fucking smart later when he takes his, when he takes his, uh, his, um, his little his cape off. off. Yeah. And, and he's got the broken wing. Well, he like, put yes. it around her too. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Who, who is it that, is it, Tinkerbell, who realizes what happens? Who realizes what happens? Oh, I don't know. Somebody comes yelling for her, I feel like. One of her friends. I don't know, just somebody. Clank, yeah, Clank and Bobble realize it, because they, they've been yes, trying to... they get down to the machine. They realize that the machine has basically become a water-powered snow machine, you know, in the night, and has been spewing snow everywhere, and it's getting colder, and... Altogether, they knock it in, into the river and it floats away or is crashed or whatever. It's gone. Mm-hmm. But it turns out the damage has already been done. Now there is a frost moving through the whole of the island for some reason. <laughs> Even though that makes literally zero sense. And they need to protect the, um, what do I call it? The, pig, the pixie dust tree. Yes, yeah. The, the, great, because... crisp, the great tree. Without the pixie dust tree, fairies will virtually cease to exist. You know, they're not going to be able to fly anymore. They're, probably some of their magic will... will it, it's just it's just bad. It's bad. Very bad. 
they have to go pick up the animals and get them inside. The animals who aren't like winter ready, like most of the bugs and, and some birds and stuff. And they have to put blankets all over the pixie dust tree. The problem is they're fairies. And therefore their blankets are like an inch long. Mm -hmm. And they didn't think to like maybe duct tape them together or something to like, you know, get that square footage a little more weighted down. It's just fun. It's not working. We spend a good good number of scenes watching all these fairies throw these little napkins. Little, they're not even as big as napkins. Like, yeah, those little like cocktail napkins, I guess. Just, yeah, like, these little them. like I these little like eye gla- like glasses cleaning. Yeah. Uh <laughs> How about that. You scene? know, right? Like and they're not even they're not even overlapping, right? There's a lot of bare area <laughs> being yeah, left behind. Yeah. And they get like blown away in the wind and it's just it's not working. Yeah, at one point I think Bobble just comes up and he's like, It's not working and I'm like, Yeah, no shit, dude. Like Tinkerbell realizes that the periwinkle, the periwinkle froze. I mean, we skipped over this. She is a frost fairy. She creates frost. And the periwinkle is still alive after she put her frost on it. Mm -hmm. And so she realizes that the frost fairies can frost the tree and make it so that it won't die during the big freeze. So she flies over to the cold side crash lands and like tells periwinkle her plan and so now she's gotta get all bundled up boy i hope that doesn't come back later oh, I and really uh, hope so. and go back to the other side all the uh all the frost fairies start coming and they don't stop coming and they don't stop coming and they freeze the tree <laughs> They freeze a bunch of the forest, it looks like. Like, they managed to get enough of them that this is possible. I will say once again, though, they are freezing the tree in such a way that they are leaving a lot of bare spots, but... Look, it works, I guess. It it works out. All the fairies are told to go wait inside. Lord Malori tells all the frost fairies to stand guard, although I cannot fathom what they're standing guard against because they're just kind of... so odd. They're just standing facing out like there's going to be like a horde of Trojans running toward them or something. But it's (laughs) just the winter. And it's already cold. And also, they've dealt with this before. Like, this is how they live. (laughs) Yeah, right? And the other fairies are all shivering inside. and But then, sun breaks. And they think for about a quarter of a second that it didn't work. (laughs) And then immediately the uh, pixie dust tree starts spewing pixie dust everywhere. And everybody is happy. Um, And then it turns out, uh uh-oh, Tinkerbell's wing is broken. And there's no way to fix a fairy wing, so I guess that's the end of the movie. Tinkerbell's wing is broken. And as we know, there is no known way to fix I wish you wouldn't say no there's no way I mean we there's it's impossible so it's impossible we should stop talking and, about it I guess and here and here's and here's where my genius came in right oh where gosh. I started writing a better movie because earlier <laughs> in the film we saw that when uh, Tinkerbell and her sister connected wings like this big blast of magical energy happened right mm-hmm. and I, and I was like well he, it, it, she doesn't have to fix her wings Right, because uh, because there's a fairy there with two perfectly good ones, and and they're the same person, right? And so when they combine back into the single entity that they were supposed to be, her wing would be fine, and it would heal. We don't use um, camels, so I need to tell you that during that explanation, my face wasn't my hands. It made so much sense to me because it would at least be a consequence. Uh, right? No, there are no consequences. It's so weird. There, The one consequence there is was from building a thing that apparently could create an entire winter. Um, yeah, so it turns out when they stand close together and their wings start glowing, Tinkerbell's wing heals. And the one thing about this, as I was looking at it, even though everybody seems to take this and be quite happy about it, and you know, um, Lord Clarion and, uh, and no, sorry, Queen Clarion and Lord Malory start macking 
I I couldn't help but think like he must be a little annoyed though, right? She broke her wing and oh, it, it grew back because she's magic, I guess. So I'm not mm-hmm. magic enough. I'm just normal magic, which is still a lot of magic. I am a fairy, but my wings broken forever. <laughs> I just. And here's the fucked up thing, right? Is that Lord Malory standing over there and that motherfucker's wings are, is not getting fixed. And never, never. Damn, you aren't you aren't born with a twin, a secret twin brother, were you? Uh, fuck you. Oh, fuck you me, get I guess. nothing. He gets nothing. Out. I mean, he gets to he gets to Mac on the Queen. She doesn't even have legs, which is which again. I don't know. It's not a big deal, but it's weird to me. It's extremely weird how they decided that her dress was so long that she doesn't need legs. Extremely, but you can, extremely weird. You can kind of see through it, though, right? And it's like there's no legs under there. Maybe, maybe, Andy. That was what she decided not to tell the fairies. Yeah, so first, his wing broke, and we were like, no, we can make this work. So I went over there, made sure to cover up my wings... Lost both of my legs to frostbite. Oh, and that's what she that's what she lost. Exactly. That was the, I don't know, you and think they would have mentioned it in the story. Much more intense story. Yeah, I feel like they would have mentioned it in the story, right, if she was like, and he lost a wing and she lost her legs. It's that bare grounds level. Like, ugh. So we're done. That's it. Uh yeah. Except that now we know that uh you can Fairies can use their frost powers to protect other fairies' wings. And now everybody can go ice skating and uh, at least two pairs, probably three or four pairs of fairies can get it on. Confirmed Uh, to be dating. Um, We see, just to do a quick recap, we do see boy toy fairy. Sled? uh, Sled, yes. No, Sled, you're right. Oh, we no. do... oh, it is Sled. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Sled, we do see Boy Toy Fairy Sled uh, just just seek out, uh, apropos of nothing, <laughs> um, seek out, oh, what's her name? Rosetta. Blossom? Uh, Rosetta, and just be like, hey, you know, I'm attractive, you're attractive, maybe we can make this work. Right. That's <laughs> basically what he says. Uh, she, you know, she's head over heels. She, like, um, melts. She, literally. Like, in a way that is, like, th- that to me read, like, extremely as sexual attraction. <laughs> like, oh, absolutely, right? Well, it's and, just so weird in a movie that is explicitly for, like, five-year-olds. Yeah, right? It's like, that's unnecessary. <laughs> she, she's down. Lord. So Lord Nalori and the Queen are obviously together now. Mm-hmm. And, uh... We see Bobble give a gift of something. I forget what. I think it was a giant acorn. Oh, it was. It was a giant acorn because she really likes acorns. To one of Periwinkle's friends. I don't remember which one. It's either Spike or Gliss. I'm gonna say Spike, but I don't know if that's true. No, I think Spike is the the kind of the kind of like goth Video one. coded one. <laughs> Yeah, so it has to be Gliss, um, which I'm reading the Wikipedia here, and apparently Gliss is Periwinkle's secondary best friend, which is a little harsh. A hilarious and dubious title. <laughs> I, I, I just don't... I think it's a bit... If, if I told somebody, hey, you're my best friend, and I told somebody next to them, hey, you're my secondary, secondary best, best friend, friend, that means that they're not your best friend. They're just not. They're your friend. You know, ironically, on the character information on uh, the Disney wiki, I cannot tell if she is good or evil aligned. Which what? They don't, they don't know it's unclear? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, here, here's, some other sh- here's some other shit we can get into, right? Lord Malori. He is a lord, right? Are we going to try to pick apart what that means? Well, because the other, the other fairies are ministers of seasons. Right? Yes, this is true. Does that mean that the other fairies do have lord counterparts? Are there lords who lead them and the ministers? The lord of summer? Is, 
whose job it is to like actually make summer happen. Well, because Fairy Mary, who oversees the Tinkers, isn't a lord. No, she's just good old Fairy Mary. So is he is he specifically a lord because he got down? <laughs> Right? Is this is this like is this like a prince consort type deal? <laughs> because he has served the throne, as it were. Sled is a nickname, apparently. I don't is... care. His name is Sled. His name is Sled. I don't understand why it says Ryan here because his name is Sled. No one calls him Ryan. Not, absolutely nobody calls him Ryan. That's not a fairy name. His no, name it is, is not Sled. And I, I looked it up just to see if his voice actor was somebody, and he is, in fact, a teen drama guy. Like, he was wow, in 90210, absolutely. he was in Beverly Hills, 90210. I don't know why they call him Ryan, because I'm looking him up on the, again, on the Disney wiki, and they do not have him listed as, as Ryan. He's just called Sled. Oh, wild. This guy's apparently the voice of Anakin Skywalker in the Clone Wars series, which is... That tracks. Intr- yeah, it fits. Because Anakin Skywalker is like the most head empty fucking like himbo. <laughs> that guy's head was so empty he was radicalized by Nazis. Like That's basically what happens. Mm-hmm. This movie has opened up like a whole, like a wider world of like fucked up politics that the fairies are engaged in, right? Like, well, they've been fixed now. Once again, Tinkerbell has solved an internal problem. <laughs> <laughs> By accident. Uh, this is what she does. There was like an entire generation of winter fairies who were like unable to experience three fourths of their sister kind. Yeah, that's true. It's it's weird how much more cut off the winter fairies were, and I get it. But because like spring fairies could go into summer or fall, the winter fairies were the most cut off. It's just it's I don't know. It feels like they're the only ones who get their own like segregated space, Oof. and all. And also, that's they, an accurate word, but a very charged one. <laughs> yes, no, right, but it, it, it's weird. It's just weird. I don't know why they did it this way. No, it's it's very odd. And again, I was convinced until I looked up the dates that it was made because Frozen was popular. And they're like, oh, people like movies about ice and sisters. It's like, okay, sure. But it doesn't appear to be that unless they unless they released it because they figured Frozen would be popular. But that's No, cool. there there was no way, right? Because if this movie came out in 2012, that means that this movie started production in like 2010. Right. That was fine. It might be the worst one so far. I, I think it's the worst one, but it's still, like, it's still kind of a decent track, right? Like, I definitely sit down and watch this with, like, a couple, with, like, some kids. Yeah, I might try to convince them to watch something else, but honestly, if this is the one that goes on, they're like, eh, well, alright, whatever. I guess my issue with this one, though, I said this is the worst one, and in a lot of ways it is, but the other one had a weird anti-science take. No, yeah, absolutely. That, like, the other one... Like, this one introduces the fact that internal politics in fairy in fairies is weird. But the other one was, like, regular politics is fucking weird. Yeah, sci- science is bad. Science um, is bad. Fairies. But the other one was also more exciting. She never got to drive that car. Yeah, she did never get to drive that car. I still think The Lost Treasure is probably the best one. I do like The Lost Treasure. It, it has the best sidekick character. It does. It just, it has the best plot, as bananas as it is. It just has a lot going for it. It has, and this is a weird one, the best costume. Yes. Like, and I feel like it's weird that I have an opinion on that. But like... <laughs> and, and also, it has a, a solution to the problem that is entirely, like, tinker-related. Yes, she has a problem, she tries to fix it with magic, that doesn't work, and eventually she gets to... How can I use, like, the physics of light to make this problem better? To make this problem go away. To turn the problem itself into a solution. Into a solution. Now, from Which now on, great. we break this thing. Yeah. I would say this is maybe, this is, like, kind of the, the last end of two movies that kind of felt like a dip, right? Like, or at least yeah. a leveling off. But... Yeah, and I don't know if they're going to pick up again with the next one. Well, that's the thing, is from what I've heard, the last two are the big ones. They're the ones that everybody talks about. Right? When 
when we started this journey, <laughs> yes, the one that the only one that I had heard of was the last one, Legend of the Never Beast. Never Beast, yeah, that's it. something beast. I knew that. And and when I found out it was the last one, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be kind of a trudge. But so far, it's been nice, and I feel like these last two are definitely gonna hit probably the hardest and the weirdest. Yo, dog! I think that's Captain Hook on the poster of Pirate Fairy. I mean, are you looking at the same poster that I was looking at? Because that is an off-model Captain Hook. If so, is it before he lost his hook? Like, what's happening? <laughs> I don't know. I'm excited for this one, though. So I have a question: Are we gonna yes. watch the Pirate Fairy next time? I'm I'm down to keep going. Do you want to ride this out until the end of the series? I feel like we might as well, right? Like, we've been... I want us to finish these movies because at some point next year, a new Peter Pan movie's coming out. Oh, jeez. And I, I, I want us to have these happy memories. <laughs> <laughs> because... It's I, just... Okay. My Disney Plus recommendations, man, they're gonna get so weird. <laughs> Dude, mine are already bad. I've actually been using my little brother's account because uh, his are already kind of all over the place. Why? I should just use the kids. I should just click kids, which it automatically gives you and be like, yes, I am a child watching this fairy movie. Shut up. What you do is what I do, which is I make a set. I, what I used to do, actually, is I would make a separate I would make a separate account that's like me. This is what I want to watch for my own time. And then like bullshit which is like just like i don't want this to mess with my algorithm right uh if that's the true secret of the wings of the week brought it back thank you for listening to the next video vhs i have been your host Tony Busto. i have been your host andy reyes you can find me at Irvis on twitter i don't know why that took so long to say and uh my website is quite Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at royalty underscore amounts. You can also find me at my other podcast. Uh, what is it called? Time Honored Pictures. Time Honored Pictures. Yeah, that's it. Time I Honored Pictures. At, Shh, only, only Andy for At Time Honored Pictures at timehonoredpictures.com. Uh, I, am, I am still kind of under the side effects of the juice, so I'm not. But yeah, go, go check that out. Um, if you want to hear me grow angry, uh, that's where you go. That's, uh, uh, westerns, huh? The fun genre. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, friend. Things are about to get worse. I cannot see how that was going to No, no, it's, it's fine. That, I think that, that one might be the worst one for now. For now. Come on down to the Rex 2 Jump video. We got other stuff. <laughs> I don't remember what I say anymore. Yeah, well, I think what we say is, uh... I used to have Thank you for listening. We would also like to thank Lee Rosevier for the album Planet for No for the song Planet uh, e. e off of Trappist yeah. One. Correct. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, and if you liked this episode or any of our episodes, go read us on your podcatcher app. Five stars. Five stars. I would I would rather you give us one star than four stars. You know, if something bothers you, just just go all the way. Yeah, I'm the ghost of Johnson. I'm internet dead. Do you remember what we said would be the wildest thing for this new Peter Pan movie to do? No, I actually don't. So they have cast Tiger Lily for this movie.